Hey gang, welcome back. Today's video was requested by a viewer. On my channel, I have three popular AC repair videos, one for central air, one for wall and window AC units, and another for car AC systems. All three videos are highly comprehensive. You can find links to those videos at the end of this video if you have not seen them. If you're an auto mechanic or AC technician, then I'm going to show you a must-have tester that's very low in cost, has high sensitivity, and also has high buyer satisfaction ratings. The tester you see here, I purchased a little over a year and a half ago. It was not an item that was sent to me for free by any company. And the good thing is, I've been using it for about a year and a half, so I can confirm that it does work very well. Just like my other videos, a link has been posted in the video description area if you decided to purchase one of these after watching the video. Now before I go over the specifications for the unit and point out all the features, I just wanted to let you know, years ago when I did AC systems, I purchased a refrigerant leak detection device, and it looked like what you see right over here. It did work very well. That one actually had, in the sensor end, there was a little vacuum or a little pump that would actually suck the refrigerant in, allowing for even higher levels of sensitivity when detecting refrigerant. Now using that one in the past and using this one here, I could tell you the other one that I had was around $250 to $300. This one here is only one-tenth the cost. The sensitivity on the other one, if I was to rate it at a 10, I would have to rate this one right around an eight and a half. And that is excellent considering the cost of this unit. Now what I like about this unit, it does fit in your hand very nicely. Not too big, very comfortable. Right over here is a battery door. And there's four AAA batteries. This is your sensitivity control. When you first turn it on, it's the lowest sensitivity. As you rotate it to the seven, it's the highest. This automatically adjusts to the surrounding air. So what you do is when you first turn it on, you have to wait about six seconds before you begin detecting. Over here is a power indicating LED. When the battery is strong, it's going to be green. As the battery gets weak, when you see orange show up, that's an indication the batteries need to be changed. Over here is where the buzzer sounds. You can see the wand, very flexible. Any configuration, it'll hold. Now the sensor tip on these, this unscrews. This is very high voltage, so if the power is turned on, you do not want to touch this. You can get a pretty nasty shock. In here is the sensing element, and you do want to keep this clean. Do not get grease and dirt inside of this. If it does get greasy or dirty, you could drop this in some 70% rubbing alcohol and let it agitate around. Take it out using an air blaster. Just blast it dry and allow it to sit. Once it's fully dry, screw it back on and you should be good to go. Keep in mind, nothing lasts forever. Eventually the tip will have to be replaced. Also included with this unit is this very nice pouch. Now let's go over the specifications for this unit. Then I'll show you some common areas where to use this tester on your vehicle. Over here you can see German technology. This tester has the ability to detect CFCs such as R12, R11, R500, R503, HCFCs, R123, R124, R502, HFCs such as R134A, R404A, R125. Not only will this detect refrigerants, but it's also going to be able to detect ethylene oxide gas leaks. It'll also detect SF6 in high voltage circuit breakers, chlorine, fluorine, bromine, as well as cleaning agents used for dry cleaning. You can also detect halogen gases in fire extinguishing systems. Operating temperature for this device is between 30 degrees and 125 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 and 52 degrees Celsius. You can expect a battery life of around 50 hours. Startup time, only 6 seconds. Response is instantaneous when refrigerant is detected. And this probe length is 20 centimeters. If you happen to find an area where there's an excessive leak, this will sound very loud. And in order to reset it, you're going to take the tip, push it off to the side where there's fresh air. After a few seconds, 
you'll hear it return to normal. You would lower the sensitivity to the lowest setting, which would be number one. Then you would search the area all over again to see if you can pinpoint exactly where that large leak is coming from. Now according to the manufacturer, if you put this on the highest sensitivity setting, which is number seven, if you place the tip next to a leak, it should have a sensitivity of around six grams per year. That is extremely little. If you take a look at this can of R134A, right down here, 340 in this can, and it's only three quarters of a pound, so six grams per year leak is really not much. Okay, I just cracked the valve and I tightened it back down. So we're gonna let that sit a minute. Now when you turn on the unit, it's going to have a steady beeping sound. That's on a lower sensitivity. We should be able to detect the refrigerant remaining inside this tube. And you could look around the valve if there was any leaks. See that works very well. Now we're going to test a little tiny bubble coming out of the valve when it gets on the surface to see if this tester has what it takes to detect such a small amount. There we go. Here it is. And as you can see, that little tiny amount the detector was able to detect. All right, let's go outside. I'm going to show you a couple of examples how you can use this on your vehicle. When you inspect the AC system under the hood, you're going to take the leak detector and you're going to check the fittings on the receiver dryer like you see right here. In my case, there's a fitting on the top as well as one on the bottom. And on the top, there's also a high pressure switch. You're also going to want to carefully inspect the condenser. When you have a refrigeration leak, oil is released oil attracts dirt and what you're going to end up seeing is an oily dirty area so just inspect the condenser especially along the bottom right over here if you see any areas that are oily there's a good chance that that area is leaking over here by my condenser you can see the high pressure service valve and there's two blocks of aluminum that are bolted together in between those blocks are o-rings so you want to sniff around there if there's any detection you're going to have to evacuate the system in order to replace those o-rings. Check around the service valve caps, make sure there's no leaks. Be sure to check the connections at the expansion valve on the firewall that leads into the evaporator. Check all the way around both sides of the expansion valve. And usually when the compressor leaks, it's going to be around the shaft seal located behind the clutch. Right over here, you can see where the probe is reaching. You want to check behind that clutch all around the sides to make sure there's no detection. Okay, now let's go inside the vehicle to take a look at the evaporator. Okay, now the best way to inspect the evaporator would be to actually get underneath the dashboard on the passenger side or behind the glove box to access the evaporator housing. And in that housing, you're going to see a small component known as a resistor. Since Freon is heavier than air, all you'd have to do is remove the blower module. When you do that, you could place the probe immediately in that opening. If you have any detection, you're going to know the evaporator is leaking. Another way to do it, depending on the size of the leak, you can let the vehicle sit between 10 minutes and as much as overnight. And after you do that, you want to close the air vents on the top right and top left. You want to leave just the center open right here. You want to make sure it's upper level only. You don't want bi-level. You're going to insert the detection probe inside the vent, and you're going to turn on the blower motor only to a medium setting. If there's any detection, you're going to know that there's a leak with the evaporator. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate the thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also, be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.